my name is Beeman Dawes, and I've done libraries for a long, long time. Um, here's our objectives today. Give, give the first 15 minutes, uh, introduce bee trees, sort of a view from 36,000 feet. Um, the theory there is that we're in a situation a little bit like the unordered um, a lot of standard libraries associate unordered associative containers in that it, in theory, you shouldn't have to know how it's implemented. In practice, it, it helps you to use the library if you have some vague idea, at least, of what's under there. Uh, but it doesn't matter if you understand that that introduction totally. And, and I'm sorry for those of you who already know about bee trees. It might be boring that part. Uh, then we're going to spend. The, an hour, an hour, hopefully scheduled, uh, learning how to use the proposed bee tree library and talking about the some of the design trade-offs and optimizations, looking at some timings, and very focused on the library. Uh, we'll allot more or less the last 15 minutes to, to, to uh, reviewing the current status of the library. I'll share you know, where to get it. The library is in such a state that you should be able to download it and use it immediately. It's not in such a state I would recommend using it on production work yet. Um, and then, then the other objective is my personal objective is to get feedback on the library. And um, so um, in each section feel free to uh, interrupt and we'll try to you know, answer questions, listen to concerns, suggestions, anything you want to say. Uh, if we run, I'll try to uh, time this so that we stay more or less on schedule and since we start to drag in any one of those sections, we'll try to move on to, uh, to the a little more quickly and so we stay on track. Uh, a bee tree is a balanced, multi-way tree. Uh, B does not stand for binary tree. B, we'll get into the, when we talk about the history, there's some history of, on why it's called B. But if B is not, whatever it is, it ain't binary. Okay? Uh, multi-way means N. It's some number, not, not n the number, but you know, it's a big, it's a number that's going to be bigger than two, and it's it's typically going to be a lot bigger than two. Uh, every leaf node is the same distance from the root node. So if the height of the tree is ten, from the, that's the distance from the root to the leaf for every path through the tree. It's balanced in that in height. Uh, nodes have a fixed number of elements, so you might have 400 entries per node, but some of those will be in, with, are normally empty. Um, the on average, the classic B tree on average is going to be 75 percent full, <laughs> but we we do better than that in this one under some situations. It's not unusual for nodes to have hundreds of elements, even thousands. The elements are ordered within the nodes. Nodes are, are, are basically vectors. Um, the nodes are ordered so that then, then the nodes themselves are ordered so that the elements are ordered for the entire tree. It is an order. Um, the complexity of insert arrays in all the various searches is logarithmic, base two. So, you know, it, it holds the number of comparisons down. O is a little higher than on a uh, typical standard library uh, so you container, but not very much. Insert, erase, and search touch order H nodes where H is the height of the tree. And that is logarithmic, but the log is to the base M, where M is the average number of entries per node. These are incredibly bushy trees. And that's critically important 
because the number of nodes you touch is rough, is very close to the number of seeks you have to perform. Mm -hmm. And since, since it's very bushy, that N, that's their, their uh, H, is, very, is a very small number, even for immense trees, it is normally low single digits. So, uh, man, does this thing map well onto disks and, and because, of, because of that characteristic. Well, I mean, it was designed for that purpose. This is a, this is a little bee tree. Uh, I wanted to uh, show you some real examples, even though they're, they're atypical. This is actually, um, there, there's a, uh, there's a, a uh, probably should be a free function, that's a member function that will actually generate a uh, graph viz dot format and then you run through graph viz and you can see a graph of the tree. Okay, this is this thing is is actually one of my test uh, test of upper bound, lower bound, all those searches to make sure they're <coughs> hitting the right one. And that's what it looks it looks like. Now just a couple, you know, three three of the uh, elements in the green, I'm using the, in these, uh, I'm using green to, 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 note, to note the leaf nodes, and uh, it's supposed to look like blue, it looks like gray on this screen uh, to, to, uh, to eliminate the, uh, to, to denote the branch nodes. You're going to explain the blue, right? Well, it's a branch, it's a tree, and you have branches that our sole purpose is to point to other. No, no these have pointers in them. Uh, there are two keys in this tree, seven and thirteen, and three pointers. Always one more pointer than there are uh, keys in the branch trees. It's a characteristic. It's one of the invariants of a uh, branch uh, node in a bee tree. And uh, the, when I say pointer, because we're talking about disk resident, it's not a C++ pointer. It is a record ID, which uh, on, some, on this implementation, it is an act just a, a, a two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, that kind of an ID. Uh, I've, I've done other implementations for what's up here is actually the uh, the, the location in, within the uh, within the file, you know, it's an offset. I'm sorry to be slow, but I, I'm, I'm having trouble understanding what the data is that's being represented here. How, key. Think of that, this. So this, <coughs> this was a map, okay, and, yeah. and it was because it was just test data. It was mapping a key of one into a map oh. value of one hundred. That's not oh. eleven 1, hundred. That's one comma. <laughs> I thought that was eleven 1, hundred. It looks like eleven 1, hundred. Oh. Yeah. I'm sorry, no, I, I'm using a common to, to limit, I should have used a semicolon or something. Well, you yeah. just take off oh, a, now it makes take sense. out a zero, the second element, and it doesn't parse to a number anymore. Oh, I see, so the keys are, the well, keys the are what's right actually parsing. Parsing. Yeah, the keys have been extracted, and, and uh, right notice that control. seven has been extracted, and it oh. appears twice. So those are, those are, those are uh, that's simply a partitioning up there. Yes. Up so that you, yeah, now. So I, I can get it to re real fast. It's like, you know, all trees, yeah, yeah. tree data structures do this partitioning. Right. Right. Yeah. So I understood. Thank you oh, for right. asking, Alan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ask question. question. I mean, this is the first time I've been presented this to real people, and it's just, you know, so I missed stuff. I know there are mistakes, because I found some as recently as 45 minutes ago. Uh, that was a, a unique container. Here was the same test the, the, the same test uh, was run, and I, I spread it out this way because I, you can fit it on a, uh, oh, on a slide, but th this time I ran it as a non-unique container, and so some of the values are in multiple times. The key of 15 is in a whole bunch of times, and, and uh, it turns out that in terms of bugginess, the uh, non-unique containers, the multi-maps and sets are, are, are much more likely to have problems than, than, than the unique containers. The invariant is weaker. As well as and the client code using the 
mm -hmm. as well as the client code using them. Yeah, 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 right. The client code using them is probably, may well be a little confused. That, uh, so anyway. Uh, okay, so here, this tree, this tree uh, is, is got a depth, or a height of four. And uh, I, show, I explicitly show the empty nodes, um, or, you know, excuse me, the, the empty nodes on branch leaves, which I had on branch pages. Branch nodes. I have to, here's a problem. In the original paper, what we call a node today, that terminology was not standard yet. And it was referred to as pages, because mm -hmm. these always the size of these is always mapped to a disk page or multiple thereof mm -hmm. in a practical implementation. I always called them pages in my mind. The code called them pages until about two weeks ago when I was preparing this talk and I realized, crap, everybody calls them nodes nowadays. And I went back and I changed the code, looks great. I changed on the slide. But I'm having, I'm doing a global change on my mind is harder than that. So if I say page, just the, he means no. So let's keep moving on the theory. So, okay, so here's the bottom line. Those characteristics we just look at, looked at make it an ideal for disk resident indexes in general in ordered associative containers in particular. In fact, it was designed for that purpose. That's why it's good for that. Uh, there are no, like, you know, in, in normal in-memory searches, there's a bunch of good algorithms out there. There's a, you know, if you, computer science books are full of, you know, new devotes a whole <laughs> sections to various search algorithms, and a lot of them are pretty good. A lot of them are optimal for particular search problems. B-tree, it's a little bit different. If we're talking general disk resident search, B-trees don't have any contenders, that, as far as I'm aware of. I'd like to hear about it, if anybody knows about them. As, an, as a, a result of them, that, B-trees provide the indexing data structure for virtually all file systems. Relational data, all, virtually all relational database is B-trees under there. All these no SQL so-called systems is a B-tree under there. I would be willing to assert, if it's a general disk resident indexing need, uh, probably, you know, virtually all. You know, unless, I mean, unless there are a few gross. things like bitmaps and stuff like that that are occasionally useful, but you sure wouldn't call them general. What about hash type structures? Are those using the B-tree somehow for their disk storage? Uh, that, that seems to be one of the more frequent things now. The hash stuff is used for unordered. Okay, if you want ordering, you're probably right. not going to use. Okay, right. Okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, mm -hmm. but I think most of those, if you look at the, if you actually look at the internals, there's both the B tree and the hash table there. It depends. I mean, you know, I could be wrong about that, but. No, I think actually you're right. I mean, I think there's, there's some that are hash only. Yeah. And they, because they've just decided that you know, their whole model in the world is I have a client that's giving me a cookie, that's yeah, yeah. my key, no, there are I, I, I look yeah, up there some There are some special purpose yeah. stuff. But if, it's, if it has any need for generality. But yeah, but even in, those, even in some of those, you'll find out later down the line they've got ordered stuff, and then yeah. you're right. And I mean, some it. of these, certainly a lot of relational database search mechanisms, they... They never tell you what's under there because they want to change. They want to. What they have recognizers that recognize. A, oh, it's a special situation. It's a search for yes/no values and blah blah blah. And so they will use a bitmap or something under there. But they want the freedom to switch back and forth. I started to provide a list. It's boring because everything I looked up had a B-tree under it. It's just. Um, so I think you, here's, here's the bottom line, and then let's move into the practical side of things. B-trees are the technique of choice for disk resonant ordered associative mm -hmm. containers. Are you, are you including B-plus and B-star? Yes, yes, I'm using the name B-tree 
generic, it's used in two ways, uh, a very specific implementation of it and uh, the, the first one that was, was ever shown. And, uh, but even that paper, I think, talked about some alternatives. And, and, and there's a one called the B-plus tree that is what people actually use in generic, but uh, an awful lot, and that's what this one uses. Uh, I mentioned that later, but it's, it's called just a B-tree generally. The only time you start adding these things is if you're in a discussion where you want to need to distinguish between the techniques for some for some reason. Uh, okay, here's a little quick, real quick, because they were in Beatrice were invented by Rudolf Bayer. He never he well he's still alive today. He's never said what the B stands for. Uh, <laughs> he were, it may be it might stand for balance. It might start. He was employed by Boeing at the time. <laughs> the, uh, the very first paper that that was then published as a as a as a peer reviewed paper was but was in, there's still copies available on the internet of a Boeing research paper he wrote in uh, a couple of years before he published in, in a peer reviewed paper. He and he and uh, the guy's name is McCready published that but published but Bear was the key guy. Um, so he's never said. Comer wrote a very famous uh, article or, or, or a tutorial on an information survey uh, in computer surveys on bee trees and said they should be called uh, bear trees in bear's honor. And, and a lot of people agree with him. Uh, bear, by the way, also invented the red black tree used by in memory search. He also invented what is generically called the UB tree, but generally uh, is, is, if you search for it, you don't find them in reference today. You find reference to Z trees, N trees, uh, R trees, range trees. The, the multi dimensional disk resident search that's used for things like spatial search. Bayer also invented that. In other words, if you're someone like me, Work with search stuff all my working life. Bear invented every technique that is economic. Is is you know what he invented always is the greatest economic value. So he's he's my hero. Um, I'll get that. No, I haven't. Uh, I, I probably if I, I didn't realize until recently that he al he'd also invented the red black tree. I was I read the Wikipedia article. I was staggered, and I kept looking up other references to make sure they were right, and they are. He didn't call it a red black tree. That name came later. He did coin the B tree name. Organization of uh, and maintenance of, of large ordered index was his original paper. There's a, a, a very good survey article by uh, Comer, although it's old. Uh, it also gives you an idea that if Bear published in 72, Comer published in 79, there was at least a two-year lead time in uh, ACM computing surveys. That meant, that, that meant to me that in like five years, the B tree went from an unknown technique to being ubiquitous. Just everything else was immediately replaced essentially. There were some progenitors that were sort of close, but whatever. That's a picture of Bear. Uh, he was German. He got his uh, PhD at uh, University of Illinois. He worked in this country a few years, went back to Germany. He's now a, uh, was a big a professor of computer science for the rest of his life, and he's now uh, retired in Munich. Okay, let's hit the Boost B tree library. Uh, okay, it provides disk resident order associative containers as close to the standard library ordered associative containers as is reasonable. Of course, the devil is in the detail, and it's that as reasonable. Some stuff you can do exactly the same way, but some stuff doesn't work. Headers, uh, a lot of the, the, the organizational stuff, I tried to mirror the way the standard library does it. Uh, so it's the, the Two key headers are uh, B tree, you know, boost B tree set.hpp and map.hpp, and the uh, multi map flavor, the multi flavors are included in those. The four key classes, therefore, B tree set, B tree multi set, B tree map, B tree multi map. Plus, of course, the headers have scaffolding and 
whatnot. Uh, one of the things when I posted it, uh, and is there any interest uh, posting on Boost, one of the things came, um, that came across very, very clearly was that um, people that actually knew about bee trees and used them and, and knew what their potential use cases were all needed variable length uh, keys and or map values had to be supported. And I realized every, uh, virtually every application I've ever used needed that. And so I, I went ahead and that is implemented. There's, there's still pretty bugging that somewhere. But, uh, the library provides some additional functional uh, functionality in a, in a header that's currently called Boost B <coughs> Support. Yeah, this is stuff that kind of should be in detail, but but users probably want to use it too, and, and it's not real well documented, but most of them are pretty simple little things. Uh, the data files that are generated are portable by default, but that assumes the key and the key types are portable. Let me expand on that. It's critically important. In practical uses of bee trees, it's very important that not just the in fact more important that who you know, a lot of companies, they don't care. They use Windows or they use Linux. They don't care if the code is portable. But the data files created must be portable. Okay. If you, as companies I have worked for, Helen Talbot's companies, burns a CD-ROM and ships it to the world that's got indexes on it that use B-Tree, you don't know whether that's going to run a big Indian or little Indian processor. You don't know how big an Indian is or any of that stuff. Okay, so so data portability for them them is actually way was way way traditionally way way more important than code portability. But uh, the data files is, uh, uh, by default uh, there are there is a traits class and so you can have control over that. Uh, and, and to make use of that, you're going to have to make sure you, you know, you put a raw in and it is not portable. <coughs> but that, that's up to you. Uh, the performance is very, very, very highly tunable. Unusually highly tunable. Humongously tunable. Uh, we can talk about that. It's, it's based on 30 years of experience with uh, what was the C library that I wrote, which was had a two years of experience prior experience with the PL1 library. So I've had a, a bunch of the implementation decisions are based on years of hard companies bet their, uh, you know, bet their, their company on products that depended on Beatrix. When I was a consultant, I got a lot of work, some very big, important contracts, because uh, because I had a B tree implementation. I, I had taken. I realized they were so important that I had taken time off from my consulting work to write a B tree pack, the B tree package. I always knew it was important, so I retained the copyright and the ownership of it. My contracts always specified that. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, Okay, let's look at uh, some code here because you're programmers, you want to see real code. Um, obviously, you're going to have to have added, including the headers and some using some things to do, deal with namespace and then wrapped it in a main you know, function. But this code will run. Uh, of course, the setup there, in that case, would have the BSTD, colon, colon, set. Yeah. And did I get the output right? This is what I, I was going over the slides 45 minutes ago. I've got the output is one, two, three. <clears throat> Not right. I hope everybody in this room understands this code, but I don't need to explain it. Okay, now watch. Up on the top two lines, the stuff in blue changed. 
instead of saying set, it's B tree set, and of course the namespace is different, but it's an int in this case. And then the constructor, instead of taking no arguments, in this particular case it took two arguments, it's, it's, a, two, it's a three argument constructor with the last two defaulted. The first of those arguments is a path that uses a, bool, a boost uh, file system path. And that's, this is a file-based container we're talking about. That's the path to the file. Because it's a file, you've got to know, are you opening it read-write? Are you opening it read-only? What do you do if it's not there? What if you do if it is there? This pick, and the default is that I think you're opening, I forget, I can't remember read-write. But assume if, if, it assumes if the file is an existing file, you're opening that. For purposes of this, these demonstration programs, I always want to start fresh, so I'm always using truncate. Maybe that flag should be named trunk, because the equivalent <coughs> flag in the standard library is named trunk, which I, know, I don't like because it, what's it mean? Anyway, but notice the rest of the code um, is unchanged. You can. So is the actual data written on this condition cert or is it done in the end? Oh. Are you asking is it cached? Or no, it's actually it's asked if it's if it's actually written. When it, when, it's, when when the data is written to the file. Uh, it depends on the caching. It is normal to cache and sometimes and sometimes having so much cache that um, you know, it all stays in memory and is not written until the close. Um, I, I'm seeing in watching the disk light, when I run big tests on Linux and Windows, there's some difference between the two because this, there are a lot of caches. The OS cache. There's the OS cache too. There's the B tree package itself provides a cache. You can control that. That's one of our tuning things. We're going to get real interested in that. But, uh, and then there's, a, there's also a flush command and you want to flush it out early. Uh, so you, you've got some control over it. It's a, it's, it, it, it's a valid and important question. From multi-process B tree. So, I, but I wanted, mm -hmm. I wanted to show this side, slide before I really describe mm -hmm. things in any much detail. Okay. Because you guys are programmers, I know you like to see slides. You know, real code. And it allows you to visualize better some of the issues we're going to talk about, Jeff. Real quick, maybe you're going to cover it later, but if I understood what you said before, if I code it like this, my file won't be portable, so I don't want to use that int there. I want to use something yeah, else. Yeah, right. You got it. What What else is it that I want to use? I'm uh, sure, like a UN32 or uh, no. I, or no, UN32? what you probably want to do use if your co code is portable is you probably want to use big int 32 or little int 32 to pit from the end proposed Indian library. <laughs> okay. Okay. And, uh, I didn't realize those types were in Indian, so I guess I'll have to go have a look at that. Yeah, the, well, the Indian has all you can generate, but down at the end of the header, there are a whole bunch of uh, type defs, and you're going to pick one of those type defs. Okay. Uh, you can and we, we can no, talk, sir. talk yeah. about that more. Okay, let me just mention before we get into it, what's a between not good for? It's not a serialization. You want to do serialization, use boost serialization. Um, that, that's not its intention. Its intention is you really want to use it as a disk resident associative container. That same thing. I've seen people try to use them to hold sequential data and then wonder why it doesn't, their app doesn't. I've seen some of Alan's <laughs> co-workers trying to use it on the tree. Just regular old files. You got to just if it's a sequence, a regular old file is a, is a, is a, is a better choice. Mm -hmm. The LS has that thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in memory data, boy, this one used to be a no-brainer. Obviously, you'd use a uh, standard, uh, you know, a, a, a red black tree or standard library hash uh, associated container. The reason I say it used to be is that. 
Remember, there's three more, besides the two kinds of caches we already talked about, there's three more caches running that in most of the, our systems, even our, our even a cheesy little... L1, L2, and L3. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Okay. And about... Um, and this didn't come as too big of a surprise to me because there was a, a short piece published in Communications the ACM of roughly two years ago, and I'm sorry I don't remember the name, but that essentially asserted that we needed to go back and rewrite an awful lot of code because it's performing subpar, because it's scattering stuff all around memory and bringing it together uh, is going to speed things. So guess what a B-tree does? brings them together, those nodes, okay? And and when you see some of the timings, they're staggering. They're faster than a standard library container. Okay, for a disk-based container. Because it's all the caches, and you know, obviously the disk is incredibly slower. Yeah, but you're not going out to disk more. So. You're not you're going oh, if 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 the package is caching hundred percent Okay, yeah, so it's never going out to disk. So it's only an issue of those L1, L2, L3 caches. So that's why I say it used to be a little bit clearer. Anyway, I, I suspect that the people that write those in memory containers have, have read that article. And, 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 uh, I know I wasn't the only one who read it in real in, 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 Okay, so let's talk about, we said we're going to be as close, just this is where the stuff gets tough. We're going to be as close to standard associative containers uh, as possible, or, or as reasonable. Okay, template parameters, trivial differences. We'll show them, but I don't expect that to be at all contentious or even interesting. More stringent requirements on key and T. If you remember the associative containers, they're parameterized on two types, key and T. We'll look at them, just one type if it's a set. We'll, we'll look at all of these we'll look at in more detail. I'm just going to run over them now. Iterator and validation mm -hmm. rules. Uh, they're actually pretty similar to, to, to ordered associative containers. Uh, so you, you, you're familiar with situations where any insert or erase can invalidate iterators. And that can be a little tough on applications, just as it can be with a, uh, an unordered map set or set in the standard library. Other than that, though, there's no problem there. It's just you have to get used to it. We've got a different, for, for maps, both multi-maps and regular maps, we've got a different, um, uh, the va value type is different. And we're going to go into, I'm, not, I'm just going to skip that now because we need to go into that in real detail. Uh, the iterators are const iterators, and, and they point to const objects. You can't do modification and contents the way you're used to doing it. Uh, the fix for that is real simple and real easy to learn, but it is, it is a big difference. There's some member functions missing, some added. Uh, I'll at least uh, introduce you to the important differences. We're going pretty fast, but I... I I'm kind of assuming with this group that uh, you'll, you'll make noise if you uh, have any questions. But I also figure you're pretty fast learners, too. Um, the template differences up at the top is, is, is uh, for a map, uh, what a standard map looks like, parameterized on uh, um, key, t, compare and allocator. The equivalent boost B tree thing is also on key T and allocator. Excuse me, key T and compare. Uh, and um, but there's no allocator and there is a traits class. So what did you what do you have traits before compare? Do you because the default. It, the, 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 the yeah, and, I, and I'm typical. not. I, okay. You want to argue with me, or the review argue with me, and say I should have left it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I changed ten times, you know, and yeah. couldn't make up my mind. So what, what but, you're but saying? You, you thought about it at least. That's yeah, I thought it. about it. The normal <laughs> thing is that that. Uh, 
you're more likely to change this, I felt, than that. So you, but um, if you use an Indian type as T, then why would you need no. the Indian traits? No, we don't. Well, because do you get there's there are, there is some performance penalty to using Indian traits. I think some people may agitate that I use the the uh, native. So instead of using, uh, I think I can look. I think I show. Slide. Anyway, somewhere I, I show what the traits are, and there, there are three integer types, and I think a lot of people are just going to want to use int, you know, int32 and that sort of thing. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I mean, this is a proposed library. It's not cast in concrete. I'm not asserting this is the best and only way to do it. I'm, I'm interested in... What, why does it not need an allocator? Don't you still have stuff in memory? Uh, I, you, you certainly have to do memory allocation, but uh, this thing essentially does all the, for practical purposes, all the allocation is done immediately, and then no allocation or deallocation is done into the close. I want this to be fast. I consider even one memory allocation in the main, in the, you know, in the program's main loop is just is, is not acceptable. I mean, you control that by how big you make the cache, obviously. But, but, very well. No, I mean, even if the cache is small, that's it. It just it doesn't. It's hanging onto this stuff underneath, so that it does not have to reallocate. To allocate and then you know keep open and closing. And um, the compare as you might have picked up is a, is a little bit different. At less, it's the same thing. I needed something different to be able to work with variable length data. But conceptually, it's ex there's nothing to change there. Uh, okay, now the requirements on key and T. Uh, there's no pretty. Re there's no. Um, IO streams stream like interface, you know, to pretty things up at at totally in many applications unacceptable costs. This is this is you write it you want to pretty your stuff, you write it on top of this. I'm going to show you an example later if we get to it. It's toward the end, it's not. But uh, this is like rig, this is like uh, read what I call read write level IO. You know, it's binary I.O. So they've got to be tri trivially, trivially copyable types. They've got to be objects that can be mem copied around, and, and uh, they can't, they've got to be self-contained. They've got to be uh, in position and process independent. So they can't have any pointers. Uh, you know, get, live with it. We can't have a binary serialization adapter. You, you, yeah, okay. Yeah, you can write, in fact, the string class, strings are very important, so there's a string adapt, what amount to adapter classes. So you can use, you know, the special string, and probably there's going to be multiple flavors of them, so that, to hide that under, but what's going, you got, you can't write uh, STD cone cone string as, mm -hmm. as for key or T. Because it's underneath, it's out. You've got pointers, and mm -hmm. it's just not. It's not it, any more than you can successfully write it as binary data to a file you've mm -hmm. opened in binary mode. What about byte alignment of the? Uh, byte alignment is a critical and, uh, or maybe critical, and um, that is one of the reasons the Endian types are the default. Because the Indian type, if you use Indian types, they don't require alignment on any processor. So you can get you can get yourself with variable length data or data. You can get yourself in big trouble with alignment um, if 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 you're not if you don't accept the fact that native types may have alignment issues. But again, it depends on exactly what you're putting into the tree. The tree itself takes care to lay its data out such that there are no alignment issues. 
Okay, that, see that, you can't use a CD string, it's not perfectly copyable. Once I get, um, the OX has a trait, is, trivial, is trivially copyable. Um, I'll assert, I'll static assert on that, and so I pick up some of that, but right, that's not in there, because I mean, there's no compiler supporting that right now. And we don't have a boost. I don't think it can be implemented without compiler support. Uh, let's talk about variable length keys and map values and why standard, you can't, okay, the value type from a map, what is it? It's a pair, right? Mm -hmm. Why can't you use that? Well, what if key is variable length? What if it's a string? Sometimes it's long, sometimes it's short. What's the address of T, of sec, where's second? In other words, the designers of pair, and I, the moment I saw pair, I believe in this, but I never, they should not, it shouldn't have been a struct, it should have returned a reference. And then it, then it was insensitive to what the lengths were. It's, it's that we aren't a bunch of people, they don't like the, they, they think variable length stuff is a, is a C low, it's too low level. But you get into B trees and I don't know what else you could do. I mean, I've wrestled with this for years. Uh, so what do you do? Well, you got to have some kind of a, what is it? Okay, there's a class map value. It's got the two, the only two members that matter are uh, the key, to get a const ref to the key mm -hmm. value, and map value to get a const ref to the map type. So we didn't have this with set because set is only one thing that comes back as an iterator. The iterator can point directly to where you want to point. Um, how do you know? Yeah. How do you know what the length is? How do you know where the mid, where the where the where the the, 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 the middle of the division is? I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. All right. Okay. But just for the moment, accept that you're getting this thing back. Okay. Uh, now I didn't bother to show you the. Um, the, the using a, uh, a standard library map, there are three example programs in the, uh, the, the these the actual code for these for both the standard library version and the Petri version are in the example subdirectory. And the reason I'm pretty sure this code works is that I cut and pasted from the. So unless I goofed up the cut and paste, and then I added this later because I realized I didn't want to waste a slide saying what the output value was, and that's how. And then I cut and pasted the, the, that. And that's how I got the wrong results. Uh, so again, we've got differences, and this is just a stupid little mapping an int to a long, which are probably the same type on one, or the same size on one machine. This is just. An example. It's not meant to be particularly sensible. Uh, so we open it now. We're going to use in place because with with uh, this particular example doesn't use variable lengths. But I I didn't want to have a completely different. I didn't want to have eight classes. I wanted the same four classes regardless, one is completely abstract away the difference between fixed and variable. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly with um, variable length stuff, this, the make pair, that just doesn't work. And, and what do you do? Well, it turns out, and Howard Hinnant pointed this out to me, it turns out that in place, which is a new um, function in OX, uh, it is normally a variadic template, and it, uh, Alan Talbot right here is the inventor of the whole thing. It is a, an incredibly efficiency 
enhancer because it allows you to construct stuff in place. It saves a copy. If you were talking, it doesn't matter the ends, but with large data structures, it has significant performance improvements, and it's part of the standard library. Well, it turns out, even with, a, even with an O3 type implementation, which I'm using, you can, you can have it in place that works for two arguments. And so I'm, and I use it a lot because it's just easier. It's way easier to write it. I mean, when you write it, you're never going to write make pair. Or maybe you are, but I'll never write that again. Uh, okay, so then, then this, and this, this same loop that we've been using, we're going to use for all the examples, it changes down here. You know, the thing we want to write, instead of being IT first and IT second, is IT key and IT map to value. I, th I personally think that that's a hell of a lot better than oh, first yeah. and second. Absolutely. Okay. And I also am hoping that you guys can absorb that. Why not just value? Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's the key value the, here, right? The, the, <laughs> there, that's the standard library, both in the library and the standard itself. And in tutorials and material you find on the web and people's, you know, Scott Myers' slides and Yarn's slides, they'll talk about value to mean the value type, which is the pair or yeah, it's confused. So I just, okay, and the terminology for the type depth in the standard library and thus in this is mapped type. So I said, oh, a mapped type yields, when dereferenced, a you know, when up when you have an object is a map value. Again, you got a better idea, I want to hear it. But but that was my that was my I think in juxtaposition to key though, value works just fine. And, and yeah, yeah. You already this, know what's yeah, in this value. example you'd say, yeah, yeah, right. In this example, if that's all you look at, I'm I'm worried about confusing people that have been thinking about value as a pair. Maybe that's most people I think are unaware that that's actually the value type of a map. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're surprised to discover. Wait, the value has is what? You know, it just okay. Point taken. I mean, I I think I I'm sure I did it as value. If you, I mean, later decided I might confuse. I mean, the it is is the whole thing. So the it couldn't be. Yeah, there's no. I mean, this is you know, there, right. there's no way. This can ever appear without an iterator. And, and um, I think you're I, fine. I know okay, you're uh, that's an interesting point. If that doesn't change in the next release, I, 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 if, I if, if you don't mind, I'd like to. I'd like to actually vote to have it this way. Oh, you like it that way? Uh, well, <laughs> no, no. I, I actually think you're right. I actually think it'd be confusing. Uh, I, it's it's not that. It's not semantically or even syntactically correct. It certainly is. And it's certainly not going to be confusing in terms of, you know, clearly it's not a template. Okay, I'll... Standard I'll, template thing, but... I'll, I'll, I don't want to sidetrack too much. We've got a long way to go, but I... Okay, I recognize there's an issue there. Okay, now let's get a little more interesting here. Uh, this is the same boring example, except go look up at the top. We're going to uh, have a couple things called stir buffs, and these are in this. You can use these if you want. You can roll your own way of doing strings. I don't care. But these I'm providing. Uh, it's not, this part of the stuff is newer. It hasn't. I'm much less sure. It's the best way to do things. I think there are a lot of different ways to do that, and. and uh, all are probably equally valid. It's just which which should be the usual way to do things. Stirbuff has a constructor that takes a uh, uh, const char star, and so when you write in place here, the way it works out is anything that um, anything that's convertible to to the type you want you're expecting. Uh, <coughs> Will work, and so you just write that, and it works. So we got this little uh, 
the maps one string to another, and, and I apologize if there are any native Spanish speakers in the room, because well, I speak a little bit of Spanish, enough to say that eat, the Spanish equivalent's comer, drink, it's beber, and be merry. This is where I fought to live, and I thought that <coughs> Sarah Feliz might be right, and some internet translation site also agreed with me, but I'm still suspicious of it. Uh, but then the same same deal, okay, and that's 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 what you get when you do that. So how does Sturbuff become trivially copyable? Is it uh, fixed length? Or it, it 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 we can I think you know, look at that. Okay. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Sturbuff and this <coughs> should Sturbuff should be a template, by the way. But I I haven't. This is pretty new code, and I, I'm just, instead of showing you the way it should be, I'm trying to, or showing code, I'm trying to show the real code, that if you download the library later this afternoon, this is what you're going to get. Um, I'm, I've maybe cut out a little bit for space, but um, basically this is what's there. What's under the, what's underneath is um, a buffer that's some maximum size, and that's what should be templated. Uh, plus one, because it's zero terminated. Again, that's a decision I made. The zero, it, it works better if it's zero terminated, but it wouldn't have to be. Uh, and it's, if it also includes the length, sterling, then this runs faster. I've got the I've got the equivalent thing implemented without that. It has to do a stir length every time. Slow is is it's significantly materially slower. Mainly because the searches then have their sequential searches on variable length data. They because the, the iterator involved is bidirectional rather than random and it can't and skip. It can't skip. <laughs> if I've got a and I just uh, for this one I, I Use a fixed size eight bit, you know, one byte, because most of the strings you use. It's in business applications I've run, I've worked on this. The typical string length you're dealing with is a small number up to maybe 30, 50, 128. Uh, that's, uh, you know, we can talk about whether we want one kind of stir thing that's got ha highly parameterized or a bunch of ones. Or you're just going to want to roll your own. You're not going to want to roll your own if you use this stuff occasionally. If you use it a lot, mission critical apps, you might very well wish to roll so, your own. So this this is a fixed length string buffer, and is it converted to variable length when it goes yes. into B tree? Yes. Okay. Now, let's. Why does it know? What What's the magic that makes this happen? Okay. Every place in the B tree library, when it needs to know the size of something, calls a function dynamic size on the, the object that it wants to know the length of. There is a template on T for the function dynamic size. That implementation is instead of it is simply return size of T. So therefore, you needn't do nothing with fi any fixed length. To de you don't have to code a damn thing. Everything works, and you know whatever, mm -hmm. or, or even your own great big structure. But, and this is a this. If you want to roll your own, you have to provide a, and it's an overload, and I'm overloading it rather than a template specialization. And there's a. Somewhere I've got a reference to an article by, uh, I think, uh, Dave Abrahams and Peter Dimov of why that's a better way to do it. But, um, so I provide a function. I mean, this is required. You've got to provide this. It takes a const string buff x and returns x dot size. And the reason I called that x dot size rather than x dot dynamic size is just in a lot of code, there were too many dynamic sizes, and it was confusing which was what. The, the name doesn't really matter. The main thing is somehow you compute, mm -hmm. you find out. And I, what I've been doing is then putting some kind of a function in the 
object itself and calling that. Alan's got a stand up. Luke's got a stand up. Is the default dynamic size calling size of the. Yes. And, and I was very worried about what the abstraction penalty I was paying. I do not appear with either Microsoft uh, Visual C++ 10 or GCC to be paying any significant abstraction penalty. Uh, now, at the moment, you've also got to do, 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 do the thing, and this just got added recently when I was optimizing, has dynamic size. I don't want it, I didn't need, I only need this for one tiny little thing. Uh, I can't, um, is there, I don't, there doesn't appear to be a boost, I can't find any kind of a type trait that answers the question of, um, is dynamic size defaulting to the template or is the overload going to be selected? That's why I need to know this. If somebody can figure out a type trait, I can get rid of that. And, and it's weird because I just moderated a posting under the boost list this morning where somebody is asking, essentially, I believe, I, I just read it quickly, but I believe they're also asking. And, and whoever it is thinks there may be a way with temp, the uh, template metaprogramming library to answer that and then I can get rid of this. Um, so the assumption is that it's trimming it, when I return size from my thing, it's trimming the, si the first size bytes. Yeah, well, well, that's, that's well remember, what I'm using I, internally, this is I.O., oh, you're always using mem copy, you're never... Right, so it has to be the first size bytes. It, it can't be... It, you, you, it, it, you're right. Yeah, no, yeah, it works. Yeah, yeah it, it, it works. It all it just abstracts away the difference between fixed and variable length. Mm. I was really, it took me a long time to get it right. Uh, it's embarrassing, to, but it, it, it's, it, it's what? So I want that, uh, you see, you have a first mem raise the size within the buffer. Uh, if you just do a, you know, a mem copy of the size bytes, won't you end up with a size and then a chunk of buffer? Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, the real, the implementation of size, of the size function is uh, max size plus one plus one plus the size of this. There's some size. Yeah. Yeah, so you're getting, yes. Yeah, so when I do a mem copy in, I get however much of the buffer is actually used. When I do a mem copy out, there's no, nothing past the terminating zero. We're going to look at that. So, um, so you're going to copy my bytes anyway yeah. into your into yeah. your ma into yeah. your internal magic. So, really, I, I I shouldn't have to give you. I should be able to give you an indirect. Yeah, that was. Uh, we're going to have to pick up the speed here. Yeah. <laughs> Just sure. So that another slide <laughs> hits that. Um, this. This is a dump, a hex dump. I deliberately made the page size very small so it would fit on a hex dump. This is a header record, ignore that, not important for this discussion. Uh, the first, this color, which was supposed to be a free pink, um, that's overhead, that's the, uh, thir the, the uh, four bytes of overhead that uh, if you're using the default traits that every node has. And now this is the first key. Um, which is B Mary in the example, and this is the first value. So here's our our count. Here's the you know the ASCII characters. Here is the terminating null. Notice the next thing. You know there's no wasted space. You can't represent that. There's no way to represent that in less space. And that's this. You know, I think that in, that's, that's what's, what it looks like under the top. Under the top. Oh yeah, here's it. Okay. My design decisions with this map type, another was to use a key pointer and const key pointer. Um, it, 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 
it, it, I ended up, it was more troublesome. The code was messier. This, the, 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 this map type is better. I abandoned that. You can see everything is up on GitHub. You can look up my, instead of waiting until I got something that was pretty nice and putting it on GitHub, I put it all up there. All the dirty laundry, all the mistakes, the bugs, the dead ends. Is, is in, if you look at the branches, they are up there. So yeah, I considered it, I implemented it. I never got it working. I switched to this, stuff started going smoother. But I'm not saying you couldn't use this approach. I'm sure you can, but I was having trouble with it. Some of this code is not easy code. I'm just thinking of that extra copy. Into the map, but from your stuff. Um, well, yeah, but no, no, probably just, not too important. Yeah, well, it, it's not. Modifying map value, we've got const iterators, we can't write that. We come up with a new value to something, we can't, you know, this is const. Uh, and the reason it's got to be const is that, remember, a node maps to a disk page. Writing disk pages are, is expensive. I don't want to, every time you touch something, write. I only want to write when there's a change to that page with this Android library in interface. I can't tell when you use the square bracket operator. I can't tell the difference between a modifying and a non-modifying reference. I need to know that desperately to, to maintain performance. So instead, we make it all const, uh, provide an additional member that takes the iterator, doesn't matter whether it's const or not, the type that you want to, the information you want to, and you say, so you got a B tree map, and you say uh, update that one with that new value. There is a current restriction that the new, on, if it's variable length, that the new value and the old value have to be the same length. That's just because I'm, I haven't gotten around to implementing the the, uh, the other two cases, the larger and smaller cases. Both of them are separate cases as far as the internal code goes, and I just haven't gotten, gotten to it. Do you plan to before release? Uh, I think it is. It, it, yeah, probably. I mean, I, the question is, how efficiently do you do it? There are different ways to do that internally, and it's trivial to do a, a not maximal efficiency implementation, which is what I suppose I'll do. So missing functions, max size. Size type's way too small. I mean, these B trees, B trees scale. They scale from tiny, floppy disks right on up to the giantest terabyte petrobyte disk arrays, mm -hmm. 10 times, hundreds of times bigger than have ever been built. They scale, they scale, they scale. It's been, been shown time and time again. And again, the, 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 the um, square brackets and whatnot, that's the main stuff that's missing. Uh, there are a few things, I think, that are missing because they haven't gotten around to implementing them. But the, the, in max size, I, but I don't know what. What, what do you, I don't know, I just what, haven't thought about what, it. What about, so, but the, there's a size though. Oh yeah, there's a size function, okay, but remember max size is one of the stand, I'm trying to hold the interface the same, where I can, I'm showing to you as standard library containers. There's a max size on the start, and it's, it's poorly specified and it's troublesome in the standard mm -hmm. library too. It, 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 some people would like to get rid of it in the standard library. Uh, here's some new stuff. Um, you can just uh, have a B tree and um, then open it later. You know, it's like, like a lot of other things that you, you can have a file that's not actually open and then later open it, and that's very convenient. It may be in a loop where you open it, do something, close it, open another one, do something, close it. you can do that. So there's an open function, takes essentially this similar arguments to the constructors. There's also a flush function because you may want to flush stuff out to disk to the extent your op operating system will do so when you tell it to write. Uh, there's a close function, you know, does the opposite of open, is, it, uh, is open to ask whether it's open or not. Uh, there's a no, no size max, uh, that's just an observer. There's a max cache size observer and a max cache size, you can change it 
does it can be changed dynamically on an open period. I'm going to skip that. I'm going to get to some of this stuff. Let's talk about tuning and performance. Maximum cache size, critical. There's the function. Give it a size because this is this one. Here are real timings. Um, these are on a Windows machine, my Windows development machine. Uh, a similar set of timings have been run on Linux. These, these are sort of nicer because I guess I think Windows disk caching is more reg I think Linux it looked to me like it was being more aggressive and trying to take advantage of special situations. But it made my timings look weird. Because you do something that should be slower and then it would be faster. And, 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 and so I just, it, plus I was doing this on the Windows box. Okay, uh, I timed, this was five million calls, used the uh, standard, well, I used post random to generate the values. Uh, it's just a map of 32-bit uh, into a 32-bit and uh, used uh, random library. Uh, I set the random number generator up so some of the numbers were duplicates because that's the way it happens in a lot of real applications. You know, inserts fit on a unique container fail because the thing's already there. Uh, likewise, a find, likewise, um, some of the finds fail deliberately because that's in real world applications all finds can succeed. Uh, the results are compared, are run on both a B tree map and a standard library. Um, map, the results are compared, and they should be the same, um, and we time them. And right now it's using a, 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 a my own little timer, but uh, Vincenti took that over, and that's now part of uh, Boost Chrono. I haven't had a chance to switch the code, actually use the Chrono version. Two numbers, we take a look at inserts, uh, and then I vary and run it with the default cache size, 32 pages, picked pretty ar arbitrarily. Um, this, is a, this will hold about a quarter of the tree, this will hold half of the tree, this will hold the whole thing. And the page size is 64K? 64, uh, it's uh, uh, 40, yeah, 4096 is the default. 4096, that's fantastic. We're gonna, we're gonna look at that in the next, Tuning parameter. Um, okay, we start out, and then the okay. So the time is the wall clock time that it took. Oh, for which one? Well, let's do insert first. No, no, for for B tree or standard. Oh, this is for the B tree. For the B tree. Okay, I don't repeat. What I do for the standard library I give you the ratio. The B tree was 8.66 times slower. Okay, we increase the cache. To a quarter. The time drops. It's slower, but it's not as slow. It's only six point times slower. We can cache half the tree, drops to three times slower. Uh, give it enough, it's 12% slower. Your mileage will vary. Uh, you know how timings are. You run this thing five times, you get five slightly different answers, but they cluster tightly enough that. That, uh, so, you know. so, so you're ignoring all disk I/O here, or no, with no. respect to standard set because it, or standard map because it's just there is no memory. disk I/O, right? But the B tree one is doing I/O under there. So right, so it's you've got a more one I/O. But remember, the operating system cache is under there. Right, the disk light is not running. These tests, I'm not showing CPU utilization, but that is number that is. Um, one of the numbers captured. CPU utilization is 100%. But what I'm seeing here is you, all of these you've things. got a 1.12 ratio on insert. It's 12% slower. But that included, above I, and beyond what standard map did, reading it all in yes. and writing it back out. Yes. Fantastic. This is fast. <laughs> That's fantastic. This is, I, I mean, this is stuff that I made my living doing. 
demon, we worship you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is, I got wonderful contracts. You mean reading from a disc? And, uh, you know, wonderful contracts as a consultant because of owning. Um, let's look at fine. We started out six times slower as we give it more cash. It doesn't respond quite as well as insert does. That's why, and this timing test, it's called BT time. It's in the package. You can run it on, you know, different parameters and on your app and see what happens. When you've got enough cash, it drops to the same speed in this test. Cool. It gets better. It gets better. So if you've got 16 gigabytes of memory, you can just give it 16. It gets better. <laughs> Iterate. Okay. Look at this. Yeah. We're hugely faster. This is in. This is these yeah. Intel guys doing their job. This is nothing I've done, other than I've got it in cache. Okay, I made sure it was in memory. Uh -huh. I made sure it was all <laughs> close together. But you're, right, but you're able to iterate this prefix lit through linear data for huge stretches. Yes, I, for, the for, for whatever my page size. Where's the map? It's yes. all over yes. That's what the processor does well. Yes, yeah. this is what we turned it over to them, and they, yeah. they did, believe their advertising. This is all <laughs> locality of reference, though. And I, I would all, I, this is so good, I wouldn't believe it, except that I, there's starting to be other published people's results saying you've got to change the algorithm. Everything has to be contiguous. Mm -hmm. Erase, uh, yeah, erase, we pick up some speed, but we've got to, got to have a lot in memory to, to right. really get. Because um, you can, erasing can really rearrange your tree. Yeah, yeah, although they, you know, it doesn't rearrange a B tree that much, but it does. It, yeah. Well, yeah. Un until the, the B tree suddenly gets one level shorter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but it doesn't, yeah. Um, node size. Okay, most of the constructors you open take a third optional argument. Uh, I'm, I'm right now, I'm defaulting to 4096. I thought it, when I wrote this that it was always the sweet spot for Windows and TF did. And TFS disk and seemed okay for Linux. It's, it's this is something where if you really really want maximum performance, you also might want to want to uh, do some tuning here, and uh, and we'll see why. Can you run it right on a, on a raw device? That way you get block alignment too. Um, well, I never I'm always testing node sizes that are multiples of uh, um, that are multiples of the underlying device, okay? Because in my background there weren't for so many years there were not the CP, the, the <coughs> operating systems caches. You just murdered performance if you didn't maintain that. It doesn't seem to be so true today as it used to be, at least on the on I inadvertently notice the time on that. I mistyped and I, and I didn't notice it till I was working on the slide, but it didn't totally kill performance. But of course, that's in a huge size. I think if you change this to 5.11 or 5.13, I, I suspect you'd see a huge drop off in performance. But I, I I'll, you, bet if, I'll bet if you you done 385 or something like that instead of 380. I tried it, and it wasn't worth updating the slide for. <coughs> Because remember, the pages at that point are so big, and you only cross that boundary. I, you know, and, and here the green is the best times. Okay, here, insert there was a sweet spot at a little bit smaller because you're balancing off two different factors, and they so you get you get um, you know slow as it's too small. You hit a sweet spot, and then it, it gets slower again. Uh, on the other hand, find, the bigger those nodes are, the faster the find gets. We're doing finds now at only, you know, it, it considerably faster than the, uh, I should point out, by the way, that this, all these tests had enough memory. Okay? The cache size was big enough to look at the thing. So we're getting tremendous speed out of the finds, we're getting tremendous speed out of the iterators, you reach a certain point, though, on the iterators where you don't get any more speed. Um, and insert was, you know, neither up there but down there. So what I'm saying is 
that this, that's why I'm saying we're talking something that's highly tunable. I think the defaults are pretty good for a lot of applications, but we can, we can tune this. You can tune this. If you're burning a CD, okay, so hey, insert an array, who cares? You burn one, you run it once, you don't care if it runs overnight. Then you ship it to customers and the app, which by definition it's on a CD and they're running it on the CD, and I've done a lot of in-vehicle navigation stuff on the now you're running on a CD. Running the first one I did, you were running on a CD with a one-second seek time in uh, 1994. Uh, <laughs> and you, you tune it. Okay, and, the, and you got the tools there to do so. Uh, there's a preload option. This is to make use of the uh, operating system cache. It's, I, I, I use it in a lot of production applications. If that flag is set as one of the flags in the constructor in the open, um, what, all it does is when the file opens, it then does a fast read of everything in it, and that preloads the operating system's cache. For many applications, that is vastly faster than letting it find things in the order the application needs them. The geographic applications I used to work it was a human. I forget the, the main build that some of the, the main builds that the, the IT guys were in when we built the database it's got tremendous mileage out of that. But again, it's a very much it's, it's incredibly situation specific whether it does anything for you or not. It never hurts you. Yeah. What if your cache is smaller than your disk file? You just load it, the. It's a, you, you're wasting some effort, but it doesn't hurt anything particularly. It's how big is your internal cache? How big is the operating system's cache? The bigger they, they are, the more effective this is. If either one of them is very small, this becomes considerably less effective. If the operating, but look, if the oper that's not correct. If the operating system's cache is very small or non-existent, maybe on a cell phone or something, and your cache is very is large because maybe it's a cell phone with a lot of memory. Then this is likely to have a staggering, uh, on, and its database you're only searching. This is likely to have a staggering impact on on performance, positive. Uh, pack optimization. What happens if this is the there's a lot of history on B trees, and most of the most of the optimizations and whatnot somebody else figured out. This is the one thing, and I never published, but as far as I know, I was well. There are probably other people out there that figured it out and didn't publish it. You stick in some code. You know, you you normally when a node fills, you split it in half and promote the halfway point to the above up. Mm -hmm. What? happens if instead of splitting it in half, you just go uh, allocate a new node and don't copy any of the old stuff to it, you move the, your, if you, you just take the one that would go on that and put only that one on it. Well, it kills performance except in one case, and that is, is the input ordered? Okay? And if the input is ordered, if you do this what I call pack optimization, the tree, when it's finished and you close it, is 100% packed. Now, there is no empty space in that tree. Except maybe in the very last node. Yeah, the last node, but I mean, okay. that's amateurized and a real oh, product. Okay, and then we had that, we ran our timing test on a tree that had 3,160,000 elements in it. The size of the file was 34 million bytes. I ran a copy on it. And when I say a copy, I mean the operating system. I mean open two B trees and just iterate through one, uh -huh. inserting into the other one. And that's, that's, that's how you would enable the copy. That's what my size dropped to. Mm -hmm. the si that's an obvious benefit to applications that are tight on disk file spaces because they're distributing oh, data. Or writing. That's really low overhead. Yeah, you, you better believe it. Because you're you've got what 12.4, 12.6, 12.8, 12.9, 12.10, 12.11, 12.12, 12.13, 12.14, 12.15, 12.16, 12.17, 12.18, 12.19, 12.20, 12.21, 12.22, 12.
25-2 of data. Yeah. I've got 20 or probably 15 years of experience with this optimization. It's a nice, it's yeah. a good one. I, and I'm calling it curling only implementing for the notes. I don't have to implement it. So you have to tell it my data is going to be ordered. No, you don't have to tell it. It, it, it applies this automatically. It keeps, it just, so it just keeps track. Was it, was it, am I inserting, about to insert on the last, in the last position, ah. on the last node. Oh, oh right? it's just for the special case. Yeah, it's a special case, it's a special case code. Wow. Okay. Uh, Beeman, would this be a reasonable way to do it out of memory sort, or do we have a better option for that? Um, I don't know the answer to that. I, I, uh, I know the IT guys who asked that question years ago, and uh, I forgot got an answer, but I, I would want to run that on today's processors, today's disk, today's operating systems, uh, because I, I wouldn't trust any tests I run a long time ago. I'm just going to try to finish this. Here's the traits. Uh, We've got some integer sizes that we need. Uh, we um, the header file. What end to end this do you want in the header file? You can tune it. For a lot of a lot of people, are just going to let it default because they're not doing. Uh, there's this header file up front. I'll just mention it. It's got some tree infrastructure header record. It's got some tree infrastructure, like the page size, the root node ID, and what flag supply that it needs. Uh, it's got some user convenience data. This, this is the kind of thing you learn in real practice. An awful lot of users want to tag a B tree with something, often a version number of what of the data that's in it, or I don't care what. So I provide a C string. I forget how many 30 by 30 bytes maybe or something. I think I'm gonna have two ints and one two thirty-two bit ints and maybe one long, long sixty-four bit in, in there. The you that's just gonna control the user, the user can use it or not. There's some robustness data. A lot of company, a lot of organizations are using use B trees for mission critical applications if there's a serious crash in the middle of some and some of the Runs are pretty long, and they want and they want to be able to go back and recover the data. Hasn't as stuff as as hardware has gotten more reliable. It's not nearly the issue it was because most uninterruptible power supplies work now. It's a power failure, but there was, wasn't too long ago when they didn't. So there's some stuff that makes it pretty. You know, you got to know what you're doing, but you can just scan through and figure out this is a leaf. You know, it's a leaf, and so you can. And the the data is just laid out sequentially. You can recover whatever you can. So there's a little bit of robustness class data that, that's in that header. A lot of variations. We're not going to talk about them. Uh, the one variation that I'm using that. I am using erase on empty rather than merge on full. If you want to know what that is, Google it. Um, oh, one thing to be warned about. I don't know why this is, but the Wikipedia article and a lot of other web-based postings about B trees and blog postings are have serious errors in them. Just. It's, it seems much worse than a lot of other things I've ever looked at. Uh, go to go to the actual literature if you possibly the peer reviewed literature. There's a huge amount of this has been a research topic ever since when 1972 basically. So there's a lot of stuff out there. Uh, your your header can you can the user specify the the size of the header so you can get blocked? The, 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 the uh, header is the size, is the node size. It is the node size. So it's what happens, falls out. Good question. Good question. Excellent question. Uh, variations on the B plus tree or B tree that I'm not doing. I don't, you don't need se sequence links. I actually implemented it to curiosity in modern systems. Yep, it's still slower. It still clutters up your code. It's still better to just do a tree walk. God knows my iteration times are fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, there's a branch key prefix compression. Uh, it's, I mean, it was uh, proposed originally by Bayer, and he said it was probably more complexity of implementation than it's worth. Uh, I've done it. It is. So I don't use it. Oops. The other one, uh, the suffix compression is really interesting. You know, in the key, like say it's a string, you don't need the trailing characters because it's you're just using it for comparison purposes up on branch trees. You can drop parts of it. And shorten. Short means fast. But again, it's a pain in the ass. It's very bug bug prone, particularly on uh, um, non-unique containers. Node element redistribution on insert. Um, again, proposed by many people. Uh, computer, the, you know, you study these things in computer science, they'll teach that time after time after time, practical B trees, and, and, and you don't run really, into people using it. It becomes the same thing. Okay, I was going to do 15 minutes to do this, I got to do it in four. It's available on GitHub. And there's a file, and that's the URL. The README file contains instructions, you know, the actual for both Linux and Windows, what you type into your machine, and as long as you've got, so you got to have that both subversion in Git, because you need Git to get the B tree, and then subversion to get, uh, to get, well, I guess you can, well. No, you can actually do stoop download you could off Git, yeah, you could it'll give you the anyway, whole thing. But you, you, you got to have that on your machine, you got to have a compiler, but everything else is really easy. There are some docs that are very incomplete. Uh, the build and test setups are via, there, is a, there are jam files, and there is a VC++10 setup, I, uh, you know, uh, solution. I use that for development. <coughs> when I get it working under that environment, then I run pjam. Uh, there are example and timing programs. It's currently, uh, the tests are on uh, uh, VC++8910, uh, main GW 4.4.4. 4.6 has got the distribution I've got is pro has problems, not the library. So I can test them all. Uh, let, uh, Ubuntu, Linux, oh, GCC 4.4, it's working. I got a, a hard bug, serious bug in variable length at the moment, but other than that, I'm, I'm getting in much better shape. Not using any C OX features yet. Uh, this program STL test basically runs long, as long as you want it to run, tests. The great thing about a beat, about standard library, or, or uh, associated containers, we got them in the standard library, as long as your main memory holds out, I can run, oper I can run the same operation on both and look at the results and, I, and compare them and, make, and do a find or do searches, and it, it should always be the same. That's what Petri test does. Uh, lots of program options set test conditions. I've run five billion operations on a tree without failure. That's 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 a lot. So I'm starting to feel that with fixed length keys, I'm starting to feel considerable confidence. And also, it's been quite a while since I had any kind of a failure on that. The variable length are much newer. The code's fresher. The that I know there's one bug, I wouldn't be surprised if there's several more. Uh, some of the supporting stuff, the ending Indian library that's scheduled for review, it's going to have to go in as detail or something. I'm using a timer mini, mini library that is now an essentially, well, just a, a chronified version of it in Boost, so I'll pull that out. Um, there, there, the, there's some different different ways of addressing string problems. And I'll, I'll, whatever. For my testing, I wanted a random string. We don't have a, ran, a random number. Boost random doesn't have, string, doesn't have a random string. Okay, so I whacked together a little thing that uses two boost random number generators where you can specify the range of the lengths you want and the character range, so like A to Z, or maybe the whole ASCII. Or whatever. Uh, that, that's just tossed in there for the... I'm using it in my test harness, but I thought it might be interesting to users. Uh, my development targets, uh, we're out of time. Formal review, uh, then boost release, um, 
then I want to do beet trees of beet trees, which is possible. Somebody suggested that, and I never thought of it, because nobody ever asked, but it's easy to do. Just haven't had the time. And uh, then there's always the issue of, of uh, data races. It needs to just file. Yeah, but that's all from the future. Okay, I have comments. I'm ready for I'm ready for early adopters. They gotta understand that there may be bugs. But if you're willing to try some stuff, whatever, I love an independently developed test program that doesn't have my because the, the robust this thing's gotta be really robust. Because that's important data out there on me. Uh, we're, we're a minute over, but if anybody's got comments or concerns, small question. Alan, could you re-display the, uh, the link because I must what, have missed what, 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 it. Thank you. There's not just the link, there's the whole schmear of what we do. Oh. oh, you want the link just to the readme. This is, they cut out the readme. I assume all of this is going to be available on the website, right? Well, it's, it's all in, it's already up there in, 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 on GitHub. Right. Isn't, no, there, no, I isn't there a link on the Boost site? In the, uh, the, the I, I will YouTube? post, I'll yeah. post something as soon as break, at break time. I will post a message to the Boost list. Okay. Right. Every, every presentation I've seen has had all these links up on the screen for like five seconds. Yeah, so all of the slides are being put on onto the conference website. Okay, that's what I, that's what I thought. Yeah. There's the URL you wanted. Because uh, I typed that in and... Uh, it didn't give us... Didn't oh, I, you know what, I it probably shouldn't have the... It should be HTTP, mm -hmm. no I, S. Oh. It wants, it's asking for read-only access and interview. Okay. No. Oh. No S. You can just go to HTTP yeah. and see it. Or, or you can just, just do github.com slash beeman and that will... Yeah, if you do... You can it. In fact, if you, probably if you do github, then you can probably have a search thing. Oh, yeah, that works. Nice avatar, by the way. What's the cat's name? What? I... I Oh, okay. <laughs> Is that, uh, yeah, the yeah. Okay. So I have a couple more questions, a couple more uh, things to throw Officially, out. we're through here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, so anybody wants to